So a lot of people come on my channel and they comment that same old rhetoric. They normally say, there's only one race, the human race. Now here's the thing. Firstly, human is not a race. It's a species and races are subcategories of the human species. You'd actually be surprised how many people actually get this wrong. But it's understandable because a lot of people refer to us as the human race. So I understand why people get that wrong. It's like some stupid miseducation. Now race may be a social construct. I hear that all the time. But race is a social construct. Now social constructs are anything that is invented by man. It's really easy to debunk this whole social construct bullshit, right? Because race is a social construct, but it's also very real. Social constructs are basically just words and labels that we give to things. A bottle of water, it's a social construct. Bottle of water, social construct. If I undo the bottle of water and pour it on your head, the water that splashed on your face and on your head is very, very real. You will get really wet. That won't be no social construct. But the words you use to describe being wet and cussing me out after I pour the bottle of water on you will be a social construct because words are social constructs and they give labels and descriptions to things. Social construct is real easy to debunk. Yes, they're social constructs, but it's very real. The differences between Africans and Europeans, they're very real. The words we give to darker skin versus lighter skin, social construct, but it's still very real. Afro negroid 4C hair versus straight, limp, thin, straight hair, very real. Still real differences. Broader noses, bigger lips, bone structure, skull shape, all social constructs in terms of the labels and the words, but very real. If I punch you in the face, the act of punching you in the face is very real. The label of the word punch is a social construct. Race may be a social construct, but the differences are very real. For example, dogs are species of animals. An Alsatian and a poodle, although they're both dogs, they're still very different and have clear differences. They're different breeds of the same species. They can obviously still breed together and the offspring will still be a dog. It's like Coke versus Pepsi. They're both soda, they're both cola, but they're different brands and they have slightly different tastes and in my opinion, Pepsi tastes like ass. But that's besides the point. The only people who say we're all the same are those who are trying to silence the truth. Now this video isn't about race or differences in that way, it's about something else. I was having a debate with a white guy a few days ago when he said, but we're all humans. I said, well, technically that's not completely true. Black people who are from Africa, you know, Afri let's talk more like Africa about African people. People who were born in Africa and all of their ancestors are from Africa and their ancestors never left the African continent, they are 100% homo sapien. Now you know what a homo sapien is. Homo sapien is modern day human. Now whilst white people, they're not actually 100% homo sapien. They have anywhere between two to 9% Neanderthal DNA. So this white guy got really offended by my statement, but this statement is not any way false or meant to offend. It's just simply based on me being a stickler for facts and knowledge. The statement was based on the new evidence and research from white anthropologists. So if you're going to get mad at me for stating facts, you then have to go and get mad at all these scientists and anthropologists too. Because there's this little new evidence from anthropologists that some people seem to be oblivious to. That Caucasians or white people have anywhere between 2 to 9% Neanderthal DNA. This is now the school of thought that all anthropologists are sticking to based on genetic studies. You know how it goes. Studies and research changes all the time, but this is what they're sticking to now and they've been sticking to it for the last couple years. So a human is also known as a homo sapien. Based on new found studies, Caucasians are in fact only part homo sapien. The homo sapien was in fact black in skin color, while Neanderthal was white. What anthropology state happened is Homo sapiens discovered Neanderthals in the Caucasus Mountains when they branched out of Africa. These two separate species copulated and created what is known as the modern day Caucasian. For those of you that don't know what copulated means, it means they have sex, all right? This is why you may have heard some brothers and sisters refer to white people as a mutation of black people or coming from black people. They're not talking about evolution. They're not saying one day black people evolved into white people, no. They're saying Homo sapiens mated with Neanderthals and the offspring was this hybrid of the two and as time has gone on, the Neanderthal DNA has diluted a little. But it's the Neanderthal DNA that gives white people their straight thin hair, their lack of melanin, you know, and so forth. Now we've all heard of the out of Africa theory, right? People love this theory, but it's just a theory. The theory that states all humans came from Africa. A lot of white people love to throw this around too. 
but technically we're all from Africa. We all came from Africa, so that, doesn't that mean we're all black? No. No, Bob. No. It's bullshit, right? It's bullshit like that that Rachel Dolezal uses to justify her bullshit, which blows my mind because isn't she supposed to be a professor of, like, African history or something like that? Well, I guess, you know, that obviously doesn't make her an anthropologist, but anyway. With the out-of-Africa theory, it states that when Africans traveled to Earth and stayed in certain places like the mountains, their bodies had to adapt. They lost melanin, their hair changed to protect their skin from the cold, nostrils got thinner to restrict cold air. The theory pretty much implies that Caucasians are, you know, white Africans. You know, that turned white due to long exposure in colder climates. But that theory was brought into question by the fact that presently there exist generations of brown skinned Eskimos that have lived within extreme cold conditions for many centuries. And their skin didn't lighten. And there are other groups of people that are in super cold climates, climates that are completely different that have never changed. Their skin has never lightened and they've been there for thousands and thousands of years, right? Now, the out of Africa theory intentionally downplays or in some cases totally ignores the fact that when the traveling homo sapiens arrived into Europe that they encountered thousands of white-skinned Neanderthals that had already been living in Europe for 80,000 years according to studies. They always knew this. They always knew that there were Neanderthals in these mountains or all over Europe that had been there for 80,000 years, right? The other Africa theory was always a theory and it's no longer even used by anthropologists at all. So you can trash that. Now, when I say the out of Africa theory is incorrect, I'm not saying that human life did not start in Africa. I'm talking about the belief that all races were created due to different environments. As Neanderthals were also in Africa, but they left Africa many years before the Homo sapiens and went into Europe and Asia along with Denisovans. It's also noted that Asians have a large amount of Neanderthal DNA as well as Denisovan DNA. Recently, there was an article written on another theory that maybe life did not start in Africa, but in Europe. So, of course, I thought, let me check this out. So they found a lower jawbone and a tooth. They originally found these fossils in 1944 and always stated that these fossils belonged to an ape of some sorts, probably an early chimpanzee or a gorilla. But they state in the article, if we move this fossil to our own human hominid line, that could shake up the whole story. They stated, if this is indeed a human, it would be the oldest human ancestor known and the first to be identified outside of Africa. So basically, you have a monkey fossil and they're saying, what if, just what if it was human? Okay, well, you keep your monkey jaw. So really, if you read the articles all the way through, the oldest chimp was found in Europe, not a human. They had this fossil for over 72 years and now they're like, but what if it's a human and not a chimp like we originally thought? So really, the oldest human fossils are still African, but we all know the Neanderthals' closest relatives are monkeys. The irony. Furthermore, these white-skinned Neanderthals shared physical resemblances to modern white people. So according to the latest DNA researchers, these early Neanderthals had white skin, blue eyes, green eyes, red and blonde, recessive hair. Therefore, modern Caucasians look more like their Neanderthal ancestors than they presently do to modern Africans. Even their bone structure is more similar to Neanderthals than modern day Africans. Yet many have been led to believe that the modern Caucasian is merely an African that lost melanin with straight hair, thin lips, and narrow nose due to quote unquote evolution. But this has now been disproven by modern science and DNA research. The out of Africa theory is and was essentially just a theory, not fact, and they no longer go by that anymore. But the whole Neanderthal and Homo sapien copulation and interbreeding is a fact. They don't call it a theory, they call it a fact. Neanderthals are scientifically classed as non-human. Caucasians share more physical traits with Neanderthals than they do to Africans or even the Homo sapiens. The more that we learn about DNA, the more clearer the white race's connection to the Neanderthal becomes. In fact, it's undeniable. Another problem that has always plagued the theory that modern Caucasians are the descendants of early Africans that turned white due to the long exposures to the colder climate is that it could never be scientifically substantiated nor proven. It has always remained just a theory, a popular one formed of conjunctures and speculations sewn together with possibilities, but still never more than just a theory. Nonetheless, when you look at other races of humans, you know, like so-called brown people, you know, Indians, Chinese, Japanese, etc., Mongolians and Asians, right? There is proven studies that state that the indigenous peoples of the Americas 
and also Asia share a distinct genotype with Africans and also that the Asian people are descendants of the Khoisan tribe in southern Africa. So the new study also states that Asians also have a small amount of Neanderthal DNA. Hence why when you look at the Khoisan people, look at them. They look almost identical to Asian people. However, Asian people hair happens to be straight. We're not talking about black Asians because there are black Asians, please believe me. It would appear that the introduction of the Neanderthal DNA changed some of the Khoisan's features. Now here's the shocker. Anyone today who has ancestors who never left Africa, never intermarried, will have 0% Neanderthal DNA. So we're talking about, you know, people from Africa, you know, 100% African, they're going to have 0% Neanderthal DNA. So outside of colonialism, slavery, and rape of certain, you know, countries within Africa, those who have never had this happen to them will have 0% Neanderthal DNA. But people of the African diaspora, so, you know, like African Americans, Jamaicans, Bayesians, Grenadians, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Brazilians, you know the list that goes on and on, will obviously have a tiny percentage of Neanderthal DNA due to slavery. But the percentage is normally a lot less than 0.6%. I also wanted to add something. This video will attract a lot of racists who were butthurt about the information presented in this video. Information that has also been presented many times by white anthropologists. This is nothing new that I'm saying. This video clearly states that everyone has a little Neanderthal DNA, some more than others. Apart from people from Africa who have never interbred with other races and people of African descent who have no Caucasian or Mongoloid DNA. Human also means man of color. Pure white is the absence of color. Some people may question whether a homo sapien and a neanderthal hybrid can actually continue to breed. So they might say, well, could they continue to breed? Would a half neanderthal, half homo sapien even be able to breed? Wouldn't they be infertile? Because what they do is we could basically use the liger or tigon and zebdonk or zonkey for an example. So these are hybrids of lions and tigers or zebras and donkeys. The male offspring of a lion and a tiger cannot reproduce. They're infertile, and this is the same with the zonkey. But the female offspring, however, is completely fertile and can reproduce in both cases. So a female liger would be able to reproduce with a lion or a tiger, and that would be absolutely fine. And obviously the offspring would be a quarter, whatever. You know, it, you know how it works, all right? So it's very likely that the male offspring of a Neanderthal or Homo sapien was infertile, but the female offspring of a Neanderthal and Homo sapien was completely able to reproduce. Please be aware, this video isn't saying that white people are Neanderthals, it merely states the fact that Caucasians do have a percentage of Neanderthal DNA, whereas Africans do not. Neanderthal and Homo sapiens are both hominids, okay? Research has proven that African people have no Neanderthal DNA, but Europeans and Asians do. Now please don't get albinoism confused, okay? African albinos do not have Neanderthal DNA. They are not the same as white people. They are black, they are negroid, but they have a melanin deficiency, which makes them lose their color in their hair, eyes, skin, which also gives them some medical conditions. One of the biggest arguments some people use is that Neanderthal DNA could be the reason that some races allegedly may be smarter than others due to Neanderthals having larger brains and skulls. Where did this incorrect information come from? Well, it's no surprise that after a quick search leads right back to a racist white supremacist forum, spreading misinformation in order to validate their little egos. So after a very simple and easy search, no, brain and skull size does not have a direct correlation with intelligence or IQ. It has been stated that their brains were devoted to vision and body control and not higher mental thinking or even social interaction. There are also a lot of articles that state that Homo sapiens breeding with Neanderthals has left humans genetically weaker and that there is misinformation about Neanderthals being intelligent. They state that Neanderthals started inbreathing, which led to genetic mutations and made them unable to reproduce effectively and essentially led to them going extinct. Sadly, this is a genetic legacy that non-African people carry in their DNA today. Hmm. And you can find all of this information and more in so much more depth online. Do your own research and across the board you'll also see discrepancies with percentages you know, in different studies. Some say it's 5 to 9%, some say it's 2 to 9%, some say it's like 3 to 10%, but there's always going to be discrepancies. Even the National Geographic has an article on this which goes in a lot more depth too. Just type in National Geographic Caucasian Neanderthal DNA. Something like that. I'm pretty sure that you'll find all this info out there. So check it out. So for all those people that 
say we're exactly the same. We're all one race, the human race. Human is not a race, it's a species. It's also an all species of hominids. So Caucasians and, you know, Negroids and Mongoloids, we're all races, but some of us have a little bit of Neanderthal DNA. Some of us are not quite 100% human or even 100% Homo sapiens. So you can take it how you want to take it. Facts are facts. One last thing. If you've made it this far, I'm just going to let you know one thing. All of the comments on all my videos are held for approval. So I do not approve racist comments or trolls. Peace, love, and coconut oil. Hey man, that's racist. Please remember that from now on, brand new never before seen videos, as well as live streams, will only be available on my website, ikyg.com, via a Patreon subscription. IKYG.com is a black-owned, black-ran platform, 100% free from censorship. It's the only place where we don't have to worry about what we say and expressing ourselves. Make sure you check out the description and the comment section for important links, as well as information in video form that shows you what benefits you get when you support the site and join my Patreon. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe and be notified every time I upload a video. For exclusive content and perks, check out my Patreon. This is where we have private live streams, group chats, live Q&As, live phone calls, and open topics. This is a safe space where you can interact with other like-minded people, make friends, send each other direct private messages, and so much more without any trolls. And yes, you get to use GIFs and images in the live chats. So what are you waiting for? This is a completely independent website, free from censorship. If you'd like to make a donation towards the site so we can continue to put out the truth without fear of being silenced, then please hit that donation button. It's greatly appreciated. Check out the rest of the site for videos, private and public live streams, find out all the tea, and make sure to utilize the black money section of the website. Advertise your business absolutely free to people that look like you, free forever. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at angel underscore IKYG.